Hey everyone, hey and welcome back to yet another episode of Watching the Watchmen. We're done with Watchmen now, and unfortunately we have to deal with the afterbirth of this series, this being Doomsday Clock. Uh, it was originally supposed to be a year-long thing, you know, 12 issues, 12 months, kind of would have been cool, wham-bam. It would have been finished by now, I think, around this time, but no, we're uh, about 75%, 6% of the way in. We're on issue 7, uh, Def, how's it going? Yeah, good man. What's happening, everyone? Thanks for checking out the show. I just, I can't be honest. Can I go now? Can uh, I yeah, go? Yeah, I, I literally, like, I can't. Well, I, I just read this like half an hour before, leaving it a little late, and I was just, I didn't know where I was in the narrative. Even when I got my footing, I couldn't give a, you know what I mean? Like, I just quite well, apathetic. Yeah, I, I'd totally forgotten about it, Tom. Um, and then you text me last week saying our Doomsday Clock speed release today, <laughs> and I think I just replied fuck yeah but yeah that was it just ruined my day tom it well, ruined my day well as always uh you know please subscribe check out the old episodes as well that we've gone through uh send us an email watching the watchman pod at gmail.com we don't really get well we don't really get any emails we definitely don't get any doomsday clock emails i don't really want to do a recap or anything this because i just can't really remember so um Let's get into it, and as ever, we'll start with the covers, the the lantern with the blue moth. Yeah, I quite like it. It's mm. um, foreshadowing, obviously, our our hero, Doctor Manhattan, um, and the Green Lantern. You know, they're drawn they're drawn to each other like a moth to the flame. Tom, mm -hmm. can you see what they've done there? Yeah, because uh, they do kind of get into the magnetic pull of how the the green light. I don't know. I don't know what why, but basically they have to use the green lantern to pull. Oh no, they don't, do they? They use Bubastis. Yeah. So what is the green lantern for then? I don't really know. I, it's I'm not... forgetting it myself, yeah. Tom, and I only read it, read it the other day. <laughs> No, no, it's it's not it's not clear, um, and we have lots of references to Green Lantern in the start, and this stuff. Again, I don't mind them doing this. Like you know, we we spoke at length about issue four of Watchmen, how you know it's one of the greatest things ever created in graphic novel form, uh, Doctor Manhattan's origin, and one of the most sophisticated things it does is telling this sort of temporal narrative across many different dimensions. And they kind of ape it here. Johns is aping it here, giving us the Alan Scott Green Lantern history. Um, I don't mind this, but one of the things that hit me reading these opening panels especially there's just so many cuts to tv and news readers and there's just so much background being force fed in your gut yeah it really does get convoluted at one point um we'll, we'll talk about it as we get into it uh because it's not what well, it's oh, it's just all over the shop really tom the entire the entire comic book is just it it as a run it has very little focus Every single issue is just jumping about from place to place, and it just doesn't really feel like there's a driving narrative behind mm -hmm. it to me. It just feels like a lot of spontaneous events. Um, yeah, and it just uh, yeah, like Watchmen itself that was set over like probably the space of about three months, I think. Mm -hmm. Whereas this is like within seventy-two hours. Um, and it's just cramming in so much information during that time. None of the characters themselves really have time to reflect on the events. Um, like Dan and Laurie in the original graphic novel, they sort of reflected on what was happening and brought a, a more relatable aspect to it um, that you could kind of see it through a human's eyes and be taken in by these grandiose events. Whereas Doomsday Clock, it's just happening so quickly. It's so convoluted. And there's not really a human side to it that we can kind of view the events through. I don't think everyone's either mental or has had this shit kicked out of them. There's not that grounding human side, which was what Watchmen did so well. It took the, the supernatural and brought it down to a human level, whereas this just doesn't have that side to it. Mm. Um, and it, it really suffers because of it, I think. Yeah, it does, and the, the Manhattan that we meet in the intro is this kind of absolutist, you know, monarch of fate. I kind of like the idea of him sort of pushing the lantern out the way, and yeah. in this reality, the guy dies, and you know, it's kind of it's kind of nice. This sort of I don't really understand the whole 
d- dynasty, uh, the, the the Oriental gentleman uncovering the lamp. Is that just a sort of it exists in time or? Yeah, I think so. Um, basically, the the opening discusses Alan Scott, who was the first Green Lantern. Um, he was the Golden Age one before they updated it with Hal Jordan. Uh, in the Earth 2 graphic novel run from the New 52, um, which is a, an incredible story, by the way, Alan Scott's actually gay in that. So mm. a couple of years back, there was a huge thing for DC kind of making one of their classic characters gay. Uh, and it it is a great run. Like It starts off pretty meh, but it gets really good as it goes on. Um, so definitely... Definitely check that out if you... What the hell are you doing still reading Doomsday Clock? Oh Read God. a better comic. Um, but anyway, back to this. So this is continuing the storyline of Johnny Thunder finding his ring. Yeah. Um. So, I mean, it was released about seven months ago, the last issue. I can't remember that well. But anyway, Dr. Manhattan discusses the history of the ring and how we changed the timeline by killing Alan Scott by moving the ring from the clutches of his hand on the train crash that started his origin story. Now, credit where it's due, I do think Johns does a brilliant job of capturing Dr. Manhattan's voice. Mm-hmm. Um, and in this opening page, when I was reading it, I was thinking, oh, it, it's great to see him return. And this introduction on just this one page alone was probably the most interested that I've been in the series since about issue one. Um, and everyone's theory that the Doctor, you know, he left the Watchmen universe and he travelled to the DC one, that, that's confirmed on this page. Mm. Um, and I just wish they could have kept up the, the quality of this page. Yeah. Because uh, they, don't, they don't manage to. <laughs> no, you're right. It's 1985. I leave my world for this one is awesome. And it just sums up that journey so perfectly. I just realised as well, you can see in oh, fucking Nathaniel Dusk or whatever that guy's called who comes up later. Like, the, yeah. the, the, the worst, like, the, the absolute most horrible take on the whole Black Freighter story in a story thing. I just, yeah, really don't have time yeah. for that. And I was, I, I didn't really know what was going on in the plot. I, I, I was kind of thinking, how did you get out of the asylum? Didn't the moth break him out? But I was like, oh, no, that wasn't in this world. It was in the other world. And, uh... It was Saturn Girl that broke him out of Arkham Asylum and, you know, he was put into this prison, but there wasn't really any tension him breaking out. So that kind of defeats that purpose. And we get all these weird characters kind of melded together. And I don't know, none of them are that interesting um, no. as, as as we move through. The old man in particular, the hellfire at the back as well is a little bit on the nose. And uh, Archie arrives and then we get, as I mentioned before, lots of TV screens. I mean, all of the third page is exposition, exposition, kind of, I can't remember if it was the last issue of the one before, which I quite liked, where they showed the map of all the metahumans, and yeah. here we're seeing them in action, and there's some reference to Doom Patrol as well, which is pretty cool, which is kind of DC's oddball, I think they're doing something soon on the uh, DC Universe app with that, I think Brendan Fraser's in it actually, um, as one of the yeah. guys, but, but yeah, I mean, what are your thoughts on this backdrop here, the context? Oh, it's just it's just nonsensical, mm. um, and it it's all over the shop, and it really took me out of the book due to it just being so sporadic. And I think that they could have summed up this entire page with just a line of text that was uttered by one of the characters, mm. which just needed to be something along the lines of "Meta humans are on the rise, and it's slowly destroying the world." But it's just poorly handled, and it really is jarring. And again, it's that jumping between characters thing that Watchmen to- completely avoided. It was very rare that Watchmen switch perspective. It, each issue picked its main character that was going to be the centre of that issue and followed them, that entire issue, from their perspective. So we get great things like Rorschach um, being interrog- well, not interrogated, but interviewed by Malcolm. We get Dr. Manhattan's perspective. We get Ozyman Dice's as he travels the world. Whereas this is just so, it's so incoherent and just, it's all over the place, Tom. Mm. I mean, we we get our first viewing of Superman since issue one, but it's through a screen. And once again, it just hammers home how detached a lot of the characters are from the actual run itself. Um, I watched this great thing last night about how comedies more and more are sort of relying on cameos um but they're not good cameos they're just like a celebrity shows yeah. up and that is like the punchline mm-hmm. and that this kind of feels a bit like that where it's 
they're just showing up for the sake of showing up, but it's not. It's got no substance to it. It's got no weight, and there's no real impact to it because of it. No, you're completely right. Yeah, I've, it's like LeBron James, I think, is in some sick, some rom com or some shit that I watched, and that felt very much just, I guess, a modern day Superman to a certain extent. But yeah, they're on Archie. Uh, we're seeing Superman here uh, okay. in Libya, uh, called the last true superhero in the world. That sort of idea. There's just there's no momentum to this plot. There's nothing interesting. There's no nothing pushing it forward. It's not gathering pace in the slightest. And we learn that Boobastis is this weird compass thing for Doctor Manhattan somehow. Yeah. What the fuck is this? This is a plot device that is happening. <laughs> like, um, I think it's. Do they not mention that it's because... Yeah, she was like, yeah. cloned from the remnants. But even still, it's like just this glowing cat yeah. that leads you to this god. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, it doesn't. it's not the best, is it? No. Let's be honest, guys. Even Doomsday Defenders, um, yeah, I don't really know if you can defend that, to be honest. No. It, it's just weird throughout. And it's a really weird way to track Dr. Manhattan. Like, you could have easily mentioned the tachyons or something or his mm. energy signature or just something. Um, but oh, just using Bubastus, it's a bit... Yeah. I mean, like, did, the, Bubastus is fine in the comic. Um, they they could have just brought him along as, like, a pet. It's just a character, like, Ozymane Dice likes to bring Bubastus along with him. But the fact that they give him, like, this tracking device that he can follow dr manhattan it's just like uh... yeah yeah i mean even if they just got like i don't know some dc character that could join the team and he can track manhattan i mean i'm no expert you know what would have been interesting Mm -hmm. um if they had a cloned rorschach because he was killed by dr manhattan wasn't he Mm -hmm. so he could have had parts of his energy signature and then we could have find found out that reggie was a clone or something Mm -hmm. but the, yeah, it's just uh, I don't know, Tom. Yeah. You could you could sit and think of a million better things. Yeah, personally, I think. Yeah, I I agree. And and Ozzy sort of totes up the ridiculousness, the you know his incredulity. You were led to Arkham Asylum by Batman and locked up later free by this woman who claims to be a hero from the future, and then brought here claiming to be a hero from the past. And that in in the hands of a skilled storyteller, that could be quite exciting elements to a plot, but. Here, it, it, it's leaden, it's uninteresting. We get the transitions, as we always do, from Ozzy's smile into um, the watch. What uh, What's Smilegate, by the way? I know you're more on MCU than me. I saw this trending. Is this some controversy? Oh, I really don't know. No, um, it's some sort of Captain Marvel thing. I don't really know what it is, but I've seen... Oh, is it just because... Oh, you're right. Yeah, yeah, I do know what it is. Um, well, I think I do anyway, but I heard them mention it on a... A podcast the other day. Did, did Mark Benardine mention it? No, <laughs> I wish. Uh, basically, Captain Marvel doesn't smile in the new okay. Captain Marvel trailer. No, that's yeah. I, 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 don't, I didn't even that. notice it to be honest. No, I would never. I would never watch a trailer and be like, they haven't smiled. Yeah. Oh, I hate this movie. Just didn't notice it. No, um, and I'd totally forgotten about it though till you mentioned that it was a Marvel related thing. The Joker oh, rocking yeah. the rocking the badge. Uh, comedian is being held hostage here again. Uh, Joker isn't written that well. Like he can be such a fun canvas for people to express themselves on. Like more, uh, I'm going to mention again all the book puns that he does when he paralyzes Barbara Gordon in Moore's voice. I just I just love that shit. And I think the artwork's cool here uh, from Frank's. It's always nice to see uh, Joker's lair, but again quite quite slow plotting this whole sequence yeah and this sort of derails the notion that one of the three jokers is the comedian mm. um so basically tom if you didn't know batman in dark side war managed to get a seat on the mobius chair which is a chair that allows whoever sits in it to have all of the knowledge in the universe and batman when he was sitting on it asked what the identity of the joker was and it replied there are three mm. And DC kind of used the whole Joker identity finally revealed pitch to get everyone to buy Rebirth issue one. Um, But in that, they just said that there were three. I was a bit annoyed, Tom, I'm not going to lie, because I was in Spain at the time um, and I heard, oh, shit, the big Joker reveal his name. And I bought the the comic digitally for about £8, Tom, and I stupidly downloaded it over... um, 
Wi over 4G in Spain, right. so it cost about fifty pound, which I was not happy about, especially the fact that they didn't even reveal his name. But now, because of that, people sort of have speculated that one of the Jokers could be could have been the comedian. Mm. Um, but I think you know, Tom, between me, you and me, I think a lot of us know that DC just threw it in there with no real idea of what they would do with it. And after about three years of rebirth, we still haven't had any resolution to it. Um, and I think it's going to be a completely dropped plot line. So it's been cleared up here that one of them is not the comedian. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, it's a bit, bit shit, Tom. It is a bit me. shit. And it, it gets shitter, really. Um, you know, we have uh, Marionette here, a uh, plowing uh, comedian. I mean, I quite like when she says, what did she say? She says something about, like, that's the. I should say that's the bad, uh, bad. That's the easy pain. She says as she looks him in the eyes, which I think is quite a dark line. I quite like that line. But um, you know, comedian taking the strain there, and then sort of, uh, you know, he's being held hostage to a certain extent, uh, being interrogated, and uh, yeah, again, these two characters haven't grown on me at all. Somehow, Batman standing up and able to fight back, even though he was pretty much decapitated in the last one. Yeah. Which is a sort of Batman thing to sure, happen. He, sure. he will always get up back on his feet. Um, but <laughs> it's not good, is it, Tom? So Batman manages to escape the torture that the Joker and the mime and marionette were inflicting on the comedian. Um, and just as it's getting interesting, we'll cut back to Ozymandias. So Batman just stands up somehow, runs off, and yep. that's it. That's yep. it, yeah. So great. No, no. And, um, I mean, we, we established then that um, Mime could fire actual bullets. Because I thought that was like a joke, but here he's actually firing something. Yeah. Have we seen him fire something before? I think we have. I, I can't I quite think remember. He had, yeah, I think in one of the episodes, in one of the issues, you've seen him like that he did actually have a gun. Mm. Um, but it's just invisible. Yeah. Which, <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. Don't, don't put it down, because you'll... You'll lose that. Make sure you keep it on your hand at all times. And but the, the, then we get the, the yeah. Bubastis bit, Tom. Bubastis is back. What you got to say? Um, you know, screeching, this little tom-tom, this little cat-nav, if you will, uh, leading us on. Again, you know, we've, we've kind of said what we need to say about the art as well. I think the art is very good. Uh, you know, Gary Franks is very good at drawing uh, faces. The lantern is passed over. We return back to Batman there's more fighting between all of them in this dust cloud. It is what it is, really. I think a lot of the fighting in Watchmen was quite lyrical and poetic and interesting, if nothing else. Original ways of combat. This is just a sort of a scuffle. And we see yet again that deadly pincer rope that she's throwing through. And then Joker just with sort of the lame, happy to see me flame throw. It's like, you're better than that. Yeah, that's really bad, isn't it? Yeah. Especially in the middle of the fight, it's just kind of like eye rollingly bad. Mm. Um, yeah, and I don't like it. Mm. So they arrive anyway. The lads, the main, the main thing that we've been waiting for for seven issues, which is the return of Doctor Manhattan. They finally get to the middle, which is conveniently also where Joker and the Batman uh, and the comedian are, mm -hmm. uh, and they put the they use the Green Lantern to create a pull yeah. to bring Dr. Manhattan out. Yeah. 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 Any, that, anyway. <laughs> that is what it, happens. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Do that. And then there's a blue dick in it, Tom. Mm -hmm. Made me chuckle because the show, the show is Dick Tom. Um, yeah. And that's sort of what we've been debating. I don't know if you've seen all the controversy recently surrounding Batman's dick. I haven't. Um, he was Batman, I'm not talking Batman's about Robin dick. there. I'm not talking about Robin there. <laughs> Having that, I just thought of that now. That's great. I should have led with that, Tom. Uh, but yeah, Batman's dick. So basically, DC are doing like a new, darker and grittier, you know, in quotes, <laughs> end quotes, mm. comic line called, uh, I don't know what the the line itself's called, but there's a, a new Batman book called Batman Damned. Um, and in Batman number one, they showed Batman's dick. I know you're Googling it right now to see it. Um, but there was loads of outcry. Was it giving its own panel? Internet. Yeah, <laughs> uh, there's loads of outcry from the internet, and you know we we'll finally get to see Batman's dick. We we'll know the canon of Batman's dick. Um, oh, another another pun there. Yeah, the canon. Yeah. Hey, 
Uh, anyway, DC have retracted it and said that they're removing um, the dick from all future printings. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, and it, it's quite funny because he has our Doc's dick showing off his little smurf to the world. Oh yeah, I'm just on it now. I'm on I'm on a Vox article uh, titled "Batman's Penis is in a Comic Book for the First Time Ever, but Not for Long." It's, yeah, it's now a collector's item. Okay, so you can sort of see it. An it's outline. a collector's item. Yeah, it's but it's sort I've of shadowed. I've bought all copies, Tom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. yeah hooded, I suppose. It all, all yeah. justice always goes hooded, but um, yeah. And then we get you, you know what Watchmen, Watchmen's sort of famous for um abstract paneling, invention, experimentation with that. I don't mind sort of seeing um you know the Blitzkrieg to Doctor Manhattan and then the panels underneath. I think they could have done something a bit more interesting. And I think someone like Frank Quietly, for example, would have went a bit more to town on this. But yeah, Manhattan's back. This is this is the money shot. Yeah, this is back, but it's completely ruined for me personally by the Joker screaming out, whoever you are, put on some clothes for God's sake, or at least for mine. <laughs> no, I mean, it's yeah. terrible, Tom. It is. It's ruined it. it really, I, I, I screenshot that when I saw it and sent you it because it yeah, just yeah. wasn't good, Tom. It really derailed that moment. You know, Dr. Manhattan, he's meant to be this awesome figure. Like, remember in the movie when they were all sitting in the canteen and then he just mm. appears in the middle of it, floating above them. It's like looking up at a god. And here it's not. It's not at all, Tom. It's shit. <laughs> it is shit. It is. They really fuck this up. Like yeah. this, this is such. Like this could have made them so much money. This could have been like an iconic story. Forget the fact about us Watchmen fanboys getting pissed off that they're bringing it back. You know, it doesn't matter. But yeah, he arrives on this chessboard with a sort of satanic Crowley circle around him, um, and you know, we, we get a callback to. I guess the panel callback is to when um, Manhattan arrives, when it's Laurie and Dan, and then takes it, yeah. takes, takes it straight off, and then um, goes to Mars. And it reminded me a little bit as well. We'll get into this a bit later when sort of Ozzy's motives are revealed properly, and the betrayal and the realization of Laurie and, and Reggie in this. So yeah, we get the harking back, and Manhattan still looks fun. He's, he's still one of the most badass characters in the history of fucking graphic novels. So it's still sort of cool to have him. They're hovering on this um, this disc above this bubbling forest and uh, we get we finally get the truth Def, about why he spared them uh, their pregnancy yeah he saw what the child could have been mm. or something mm. um, and he tells them that they're going to have another baby yeah yeah I mean like uh, when I was reading it I just thought it was handled really badly yeah um, it's sort of just delivered like an offshoot like Dr. Manhattan's just sort of performing magic tricks, um, like he's doing some fortune telling, but it doesn't really have the weight to it that it should. It just comes off like a, you'll be rich. I've read your fortune. You're Mm -hmm. having a baby. Thank you. And then the audience just sort of clap. It it doesn't really feel like that impactful to me, at least anyway. No, No, I'm sure someone at IGN thinks it's the best comic ever (laughs) written. (laughs) <laughs> yeah and i mean just the fact that it's like what are you talking about what did my child do which child what do you mean which child oh yes yeah, sometimes i forget what's been and what will be it's like do you don't don't, don't yeah. you know like isn't that your whole character that you don't like yeah, I, 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 I don't know you know everything within your life yeah and you can view it all at once yeah like it, it, yeah you don't forget stuff dr manhattan no, no, I, I, I really... He may, de- he may deliver things at the wrong time, but he doesn't say that he forgets stuff. No, and he doesn't error like a human would error there. He, he doesn't have any slips of the tongue. Like, that's just not in his no. repertoire. So... He's very black and white, yeah. um, and he's very methodical, and he's assuring, and he, re- he never really changes his mind. He's very finite and affirmative. Mm-hmm. It's, it's just very he's never like oh um, um, um i don't know. he's not like us on this podcast you know what i mean tom no. he he knows that everything's a fact everything's said as a fact it's never an opinion and it's never like oh yeah what was your what was your kid again you both were, were the called and like what do you mean i've only got one? Oh yeah it's, uh, i forgot yeah sorry you got one it's down the road you get the two you know what i mean i'm just just looking at the future now kids you're going to have a bunch of kids. It's mm. not like that, Tom. 
They've mm. just fucked it up. Yeah. No, and it, it, you learn as well that Adrian doesn't have cancer. This reveals boring. Um, nothing hinged on this. this. Doesn't have any impact for me at all. And I struggle to believe that that's what gave Reggie motive as well. That's what finds it quite hollow for me. His yeah. reaction, I don't find believable at all. Yeah, yeah, you know? really bad. Yeah, um, um, yeah. But Tom, did you like how they're standing on a chessboard? Yeah. Mental game of chess, Tom. Mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. that. They can only make certain predetermined paths, I suppose, and I guess wow. there's some sort of movement that Manhattan just walks in certain directions. I, I don't, I don't really know, but yeah, um, this gets revealed. I can't really remember why Ozzy needed to lie to get Rorschach involved. It was too long ago, but yeah, apparently this is a big deal breaker for old wow. face. Yeah, I don't know why he would need to lie either. To be honest. Hmm. You'd just be like, look, we need to go save the world. Yeah. There's people outside my door now. They're, they're, if they're allowed to come in, they're going to destroy the universe. We need to go. I know you don't like me, Rorschach. I know you think I'm a bit of a bad guy, but come on, we've got to work together. Have you seen X-Men 2, Tom? God, Mag- I, I think I saw Magneto. it in the cinema when I was very young, yeah. Magneto and Professor X, they had to work together. You know, It's about fighting the greater bad. Hmm. So, yeah, the the cancer thing was pointless. Yep. And it's not really been touched upon that much to the point where it feels like a big plot point. Mm-hmm. It was just sort of like on an x-ray in the background, and occasionally he was like, oh, yeah, I've got cancer. And, and because cancer was a big plot device in Watchmen as well, it just sort of fades yeah. into that whole broth, and I don't think it has much impact beyond that um you know it's great to see uh reggie's dad here obviously the oh man the fucking rorschach test scenes in the prison are so good like it's just making me i look back and i love how we see him from the back which i think is the final scene of the abyss gaze also as he's looking into the uh into the ink plot which is so so good um and Again, Ozzy sharing about his parents dying. Uh, they died despising one another alone. I don't really know how he knows that, but yeah, I, <laughs> he does, you wouldn't know that at all. No, no there's no uh, no way. Yeah, they, I don't even know why he would take interest in Malcolm. To be honest, um, without like knowing that he's a main character, there's, there's no absolutely no reason why he would. He would like surely would take as much interest in like a prison guard or something. Yeah. Um, so it doesn't really make any sense, but we'll let it pass, Tom. It's comics. Yeah. Let it go. It uh, but what I do like is that Rorschach, it sort of, the re- you know, comes to the realisation that he's a bit of an idiot. Um, and you sort of, Rorschach in this one, he's left at his most vulnerable. Um, and he seems a bit mental. And what I want to see is... His redemption, his arc of redemption, I'm quite interested in seeing that down the line. I think Rorschach 2 probably is the most interesting character in this book. Hmm. So I'll say we'll say something nice, Tom. I don't know how long we've been going on. It's been nearly half an hour. I'll say my first nice thing. Hmm. I'm still interested in Rorschach. Okay. So there you have it, listeners. But yeah, I mean, it's not really a comedy. You're just interested in him, but you know, it's positive. Um, yeah, I yeah, I mean, I just, I just wish we, I just wish I had the hardback and I could just finish the whole thing tonight. And yeah, we could just break it down, and it's just like we've just been being drip fed this but yeah i mean reggie's yeah he's fine um so we see the sort of world uh you know slowly bubbling over here um what is this red panel where it says i saw a vision of the most hopeful among them heading towards me now hopeless what is that showing it's superman isn't it is that superman oh is that like his cape or something um it looks like his eyebrow his eye and his nostril to me right okay okay yeah. can you see that can't actually no no i can't see that as like a raw so the top lines his eyebrow Hmm. and below that his eye closed his eyes closed oh yes oh yeah oh yeah 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 yeah. i see it now yeah and i think it looks a little bit similar to when um a marionette like blinds people there's like i can't remember that sequence in the alleyway where she comes at a guy with the stream then it goes all red and black but yeah yeah i can actually yeah i can see it now that's interesting okay um and then 
you know, I guess these are sort of similar to the the old Keen Axe stuff in Watchmen as well, these sort of crowd scenes. And then we get some Nathaniel, (laughs) some Nathaniel dust. What is this about? I don't know. I don't know. Dr. Manhattan transports them to the theatre where we see a black and white movie playing, um, which is the the Nathaniel Dusk thing. Mm. And I just hope this isn't the big end of that (laughs) because it's just a terrible inclusion. Um, And honestly, I I don't really know why they went there. No. It's... Uh, I just don't get it, Tom. No, no, I don't. I don't it's not clear either, and um, you know the characters don't really understand why he brought them there either. Maybe it'll make sense. Maybe, yeah, maybe down the line there'll be like some big reveal and be like, oh my god, they've said this since issue one. Mm. But I don't see it. Carla Coldman's head hits the floor. That's what he talks about when he when he sees it. But yeah, I don't know what that means yet. No, no, and yeah, I just. I, I just don't like this obscuritism. Like it's like um, you know, rare the the game company are often insulted for this, where they set something up really early, you have to go all the way back to get it, and then it's like I don't know, I, like some of that stuff's great. Filling the blanks is sometimes really fun, and it can ma- enliven a story. But in this case, not so far. Um, you know, we get more fights. You're you're still wearing the mask of the man who destroyed your father. Is a nice idea here. Uh, and Ozzy always has a real like stinging. Thing thing to say is you're about to beat the shit out of him yeah i do like that that. but uh yeah i mean fights happen here uh batman gets shocked in the head ozzy's getting punched to death joker's getting punched back and forth back and forth yeah i do quite like this bit um and i did think that rorschach had killed the joker yeah and he gets this big red smile on his face um, when I was reading that, though, it didn't feel that impactful because obviously the Joker's died about seven million times. So I knew this wouldn't hold much weight. Um, but basically, we then find out that the Joker isn't dead and it's Rorschach who's actually dead. Um, like his perso- like a, yeah, a Star yeah. Wars thing where they're like, Anakin Skywalker was killed by Darth Vader, um, which it didn't really have the impact for me in all honesty, but... Basically, the plan's over. It all went to shit. Vite gets angry. He hits a woman. It just feels like a chaotic mess with no real end at this point. And I was I was rolling my eyes a bit, Tom. I was rolling my eyes quite a lot for this bit. Yeah, me too. Me too. I mean, yeah, my, my sockets were sore by the time I was done, really. Uh, you know, uh, we move through. We get Saturn Girl here. Everyone's descending upon Archie. The old man gets kicked in the face by Ozzy. Um, Ozzy still has a plan, apparently, even though his yeah. master plan uh, just went to shit. Um, Why has he kicked them people and hit them, Tom? I don't. I, I I guess he's just sort of in a you know post rage. I I don't really know his motive there. He never really seemed violent in Watchmen, for, for even no. when like he's at Karnak and their um, Rorschach and Night Owl are, are fighting him. He doesn't seem violent. He just seems like he's sort of just blocking because he doesn't want to get hurt. Mm. He's not perp. He never, at no point does, you know, Vite throw the first punch in any Watchmen. No. It's always, he's put into, he's backed into a corner and he, he's just blocking and striking and disabling people. He's never on the offensive. He's always on the defensive, except for when he sets off the bombs. So for him to go into Archie and punch a woman in the face and kick an old man just seems out of character. Yeah. Yeah, it does. It does. And I guess it's supposed to make us feel for these characters to a certain extent, but they're so shallow and uninteresting that I don't, yeah, I'm I'm not there. Uh, we get lots of snapshots on the next page, uh, lots of world building. Black Adam is entering Jerusalem, apparently, Something's being posted to Lois Lane, I guess, in a sort of new frontiersman uh, correspondence there. Um, The chess imagery persists. Manhattan touching down on Mars, all these things coexisting. Maybe something from Nathaniel Dusk. I'm not quite sure what that is. Now, I do like this section. I have to say, I think this is pretty cool, actually, that the furthest he can see in the future is Superman running at him. Then he sees nothing beyond that. Yeah. So we'll get a tease of Superman fighting Dr. Manhattan 
um, everything goes black and he says he doesn't know if it's the end of his life finally or if it's him destroying the universe. Hmm. Spoiler alert, Tom, it's him dying because no way are DC ending this lucrative cash cow that they've built up for the last eight years. Yeah. But we'll see, Tom. I don't know how Dr. Manhattan just doesn't wipe Superman out, to be honest. No. And I don't know how a punch is going to affect Dr. Manhattan either. Like, it doesn't seem like he's that tangible. Yeah. So I don't understand what punching him would do. No, no, because, yeah, he can just rebuild his intrinsic fields, can't he? So it's like, what is it? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's just, yeah, the fact that it's a punch as well. It's a punch. <laughs> just a punch it. Yeah. It's the best way to solve it. Solve any problem, Tom, just by punching it. Remember in Watchmen when like they try to solve the 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 wars by setting up this elaborate plan that would trick people into uniting it under one nation in order to fight each other. They were wrong, Tom. They should have just fought their problems by punching them. We get the photo, which I guess brings us back full circle to the fourth issue, the incredible photo, which we went deep on in the issue. And it just a classic more within the frame of the paper itself. I think there's a there's a balloon floating off into nothing as you see someone's hand. Janie Slater, of course. I don't know. Again, I don't really know what this photo's here. Um, why it's just sort of flying around in the Detroit. Yeah. Us, but mm, I guess it's there. Remember Watchmen, Tom. Is he well? Is he landing where he landed before, and then I guess the photo hasn't moved since. Yeah, maybe because he did drop it, didn't he? So I yeah. guess that's what it's implying. Wow. That's um, pretty good then. Yeah, at least they've kept that consistent, Tom. I mean, they might not have kept the characters consistent. They might not have gave a compelling story, but at least they got the position of that photograph right. And it's just the fact again that they have the close. I'll sleep. I'll sleep good tonight, Tom, knowing that. Continue. Who the, who the hell is R? I'm just googling now. R. Buckminster Fuller. Okay, so he was an American architect uh, and an inventor. Okay, so he was some sort of um, yeah whiz kid back in the day. Not actually heard of him myself. Seeing is believing is a blind spot in man's vision. This is the closing quote here. And, I mean, I guess that's pointing to the imperceptibility of certain things, right? Um, certain subatomic things, I suppose, to a certain extent. And perhaps we shouldn't uh, trust what our eyes capture. Yeah, maybe. I don't know, Tom. What's going on? <laughs> yeah, it's not... It was a load of crap, that was. That was a, lo- a terrible issue of comics. Uh, a waste of everyone's time, including our listeners. But, yeah, there we go. Issue 7. And even the back stuff, which I know you don't really read, Def, at a quick glance through. You you can see the Boobastis toy, though. It's quite a nice effect. Yeah, I did like that. Actually, I did read this one. Um, It talks about the backstory of the new Boobastis. Um, So the death of the original and then the cloning. Um, Yeah, it's nice. Uh, the, The figures is the best thing. Yeah. And it's you can tell that Vite's clearly hung up on the death of this cat. Um, and to me, it, you know, it does some nice painting of the backstory. Like when Ozymandias said goodbye, old friend, when he killed Bubastis, uh, I thought he was talking about Dr. Manhattan, but clearly he was talking about the cat. Mm. Um, and basically it sets up Bubastis and Manhattan. And it talks about the cat rebuilding itself and then appearing near the fence and stuff. Yeah, that's Which, cool. yeah, it's a bit weird, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Again, just I mean, harking back, harking back. But that was <sighs> Doomsday Clock <laughs> issue seven. Um, we still got fucking what, five left. Yeah, five issues left. Yeah, Jesus Christ. Um, got an eight point eight in IGN, Tom. Oh, IGN is just baffling isn't it just they're so yeah. they really overrate everything i mean they're just they're clearly in the pocket you know but then oh, you, definitely but then most of these comic book websites seem to love this so i just yeah enjoy it look i'm, I'm not gonna hate but i just i don't think it's very good yeah since ign plagiarize a lot of reviews i'm gonna plagiarize one of them tom mm-hmm Doomsday Clock 7 gives the series an adrenaline boost as Dr. Manhattan finally emerges from hiding. And I don't know what the hell these people are reading, Tom, mm. because that was no adrenaline boost no. for me. He showed up, talked to them, and then fucked off. Yeah. I don't know what the big shock 
in the arm was there. Yeah, it's like apparently he gets punched. Just like, oh god, I'm pumped now. Oh wow, great writing, guys. Yeah, C- cannot wait for this. Comic book roundup gave it an eight point six out of ten. Wow. Uh, Fortress of Solitude gave it a seven point five. I mean, the user rating nine point five on Comic Book Roundup. It's getting <sighs> tens all over the place. Um, I'll read. Uh, I'll read big. I'll read um, Geek Dad's little review of it. Right. This is the issue I've been waiting for since Doomsday Clock began. Combining the whip smart writing with the plot advancement I've been waiting for. Like, what plot advancement happened, Tom? What has moved yeah. forward in the plot? They're actually back at square one, if anything. You're right. Bit You're of right. an ominous one here from Steve J. Ray. I'm looking forward to the future, if there actually is one. <laughs> wow. Deep. Well, I hope there's not, Tom, if it's more shit like this, to be honest with you. Yeah. Yeah, it was a load of crap, and we'll be back in two months or so to tackle issue nine as ever. Please, people, go back, check out our other discussions. Check out when we spoke to Mr. J. Higgs as well. That was a crazy episode. We've got some comments as well, Tom. Oh, do we? Got one from Eric Punt. Doomsday Clock is so boring and so superficial. It is a shame that DC has the arrogance to think that they can make a sequel of the masterpiece Watchmen. I will stop reading this doomsday clock from now on. Please don't stop listening though, Eric. P.S. Your Watchmen analysis is are masterful. Thanks a lot. Is it analysis or analysis? Is it analyses? Maybe. I don't know. Josh Will Cool. He he comments quite a lot, Tom. Right. So it's good that he's still on board with us, especially after we're slagging it off. <laughs> uh, I'm still enjoying the book. And I said to Josh, if you're listening, please please reply. I've been waiting for three months. I know you've you've left me on red. I said to him, what do you like about it? But I didn't get reply. So it would be good to see what people enjoy about this book because mm. I can't really find anything. Maybe it's because I'm sat with you, Tom, and you're a negative Nancy I suppose so. I mean, I just it's it's called taste. It's like it's like I'm, I'm gushingly positive about good stuff, and it's like I just can't, I just I just can't justify this. I'm afraid. I just it's it's yeah. I think it's a load of crap. Really. I think I think it's a failure. I think it's a failure. Yeah, it feels. Ugh, it really should have like revitalized the comic book industry. You know, what I mean, the return of Watchmen, the Watchmen and DC universe coming together. And it just at this point feels like a non-event. Um, it reminds me sort of the the Dark Knight Returns three, mm. um, which oh, I was so invested. Like every two months, I was going to the comic shop to see if they had it in, um, and it just got delayed so much and so little happened that by the end of it, I didn't care. Um, and it is like I have went back and read it as a trade, and it is a good book, but. <sighs> This doesn't feel like it's even up to that level, to be honest. So I don't know what they're going to do, Tom. No, but uh, you know we'll be here to recap and to denigrate and to inform. And yeah, I mean, as always... It's the... boring, isn't it, Tom? Because is we're literally bringing up the same points every issue. I know. I, I know. don't know how many times I can say this is going nowhere. Yeah. And it's jumping about from scene to scene with no real perspective. And there's nothing to really ground it. There's no characters I like in it, Tom. Even Batman, I'd, I don't know what he is. He's just a non-entity in this run. There's nothing I like. Yeah. It's, um, yeah. it's, a, it's a steaming disappointment. But, you know, hopefully if you fuck with the show, you're down for the analyses... Anyway, um, you know, subscribe to all our channels and all that good stuff. Um, yeah, make yeah. sure you subscribe to me, guys, because that's all I care about these days. Just hit 5,000 subscribers, Tom. I saw. I've, I tell you what, I've just hit 5,227. So that number is growing every day. It'll be 6,000 soon, and then I can retire and stop doing this shit. Uh, how how many subscribers do I need till I can quit, Tom? 
Oh, well, uh, what to stop doing Doomsday Clock? Let's say yeah. five thousand two hundred and fifty. I think when it gets to that number, well, we can stop doing it. I think it might hit. It oh wow, <laughs> it might hit it right now. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully. <laughs> well, um, email hopefully us. Hopefully, by the time you're listening to this, guys, um, you just go on and look at my subscribers, and if we're past that number, then it's over. <laughs> I'd like to thank you all for taking the time to listen. Take care. Good night. Well, uh, everyone uh, watching the Watchman Pod at gmail.com, send us a message over there. We'll get to that on the next issue. Are you still reading Doomsday Cock, as uh, Eric Ferguson always mentions it as? <laughs> but um, yeah, Def, this has been a treat regardless. Thank you, man. Yeah, it's been all right, hasn't it?